get comfy, relax, chill out. If you find any of this informative, or even if I get a little <laughs> out of you, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know if you've played it. And if you're truly impressed, subscribe. Without any further ado, here, that just... <laughs> So everywhere you go on YouTube, if you look at this game, you're going to be like seeing these awesome intro scenes with like people like flying in helicopters, playing music, and it's like... Not here. You know why? Because it didn't work. We spent the first hour of the stream trying to make it work, and it just kept crashing, and crashing, and crashing. We were still crashing, and we crashing, and we were crashing, and we were crashing. So there's no cool intro. That's it. No music. So, Cepheus Protocol has you taking control of a commander called Winters. Your job is to secure the city, to destroy the infestation by killing the patient zero, and to evacuate as many civilians as possible. It has a kind of a World War Z vibe to it in some ways. It's a different approach to this kind of zombie infection game style. I haven't really played anything where you are in command of the overall force and having to handle containment and setting up checkpoints and scanning civilians if they're infected or not, and then getting people evacuated and doing all these very interesting things that you don't usually do in, in games. It's a very sick premise. To assist you with doing this, you'll be able to build defenses, checkpoints, scanners, and eventually as the infection gets more deadly, machine gun turrets, electrified fences, landmines, napalm, and fort white phosphorus, mortars, and eventually road map that says they're gonna have tanks. The infection has runners, boomers, some speedy boys, the titan, or like the big, big boy, the flying ravens, and then the worm which acts like a Nidus worm from StarCraft. Now, I don't know if they're gonna be adding more to that. The units for the human side, right, that you'll play, they're okay. What's there is cool, but it's very simple. It feels like a kind of a conventional armed forces kind of thing. Though I'm surprised that there is a vehicle that can mount 90 millimeter cannon and there isn't just a good old fashioned BTR. Come on, bro, give me that. Sick shit. I want to shred the infection with high explosive munitions. Please, devs. Give me. I don't care about tanks. Helicopters. Helicopters are dope, and I think the game really encourages you to use them. You can wrap all your guys onto roofs, you can drop guys into the street, you can get around the map much faster. But I actually found that using vehicles was way less effective than using helicopters to insert troops into different locations. Now the game draws some inspiration in some ways from games like Men of War. You can customize loadout of your guys. You can affect their training when you buy them, which affects how long it takes to get them, but doesn't change the price, interestingly enough. There's the fact that you control individual units, meaning that you can load them up into the helicopter individually and drop, say, two guys on this roof and two guys on that roof, and it's all very nice. There's some surprisingly in-depth mechanics that when you use the gas grenades, which affect the infected and also civilians, but your guys can move through it because they have gas marks on There's also a bunch of like call-ins. You'll need a radio operator to do these things. There's a power system. You'll have to link buildings and defenses up to a power grid. And obviously you have to protect that power grid. There's a lot of nuance to some of these features. And the more I played it, the more I was like, ooh, that's, that's interesting. You can also set up your own pumps. Should you decide that saving the population and evacuating them is just too much effort. And uh, instead, we're gonna just eradicate everything. This area, yeah, it's definitely not infected, but we don't wanna take any risks. What else? The map is actually very nice. And the longer you play, the more you realize that there's a lot to it. There's a lot of ways you can control the island and a lot of places that you can set up. You might've looked at it first time and been like, yeah, that looks way too hard to defend and protect and set up from. And you look at it a bit closer and you're like, oh, actually I could do this here and set that up there. And as I played, initially I was like, all right, we're gonna hide on this little island off the side, block the bridge and just camp. But then I started realizing, actually, there are a lot of places on the main islands where I can set up comfortably a few small checkpoints and actually control quite a lot Large area and it works because then you can evacuate more civilians you can get more money rather than just being crushed into a cubby which is kind of the initial line of thinking when you're like oh there's going to be an infection we've got to find a small defendable location no no you can go crazy now the game does encourage you go out and attack the infection however this is where we do get onto some of the things that are a little tedious and a little bit unbalanced so to speak it just feels odd the infection feels like it starts off at zero and then suddenly it goes up to a million and the whole segment is infected and there's like 300 coming at you and items coming at you and big shit and worms and it just goes from like zero to a thousand way too fast in my opinion. There's not a gradual build up of the infection. The same for you where your own power goes from zero to a thousand as well, but not at the same time. The infection it happens faster and most of my runs initially until I tweaked some of the settings, it was, it was pain. It was pain. 
The fundamental thing is you get on the island, you build up, you evacuate civilians, and the goal is to kill patient zero. Now, you can do this in any way you want, and obviously the longer you take, the stronger the infection gets, the harder it's going to be, but um, I wouldn't know. It's because the performance is terrible. Now, I don't know how other people's experiences are, but my experience was horrible. Now, I run an i9 9900K, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 3070 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. The game is installed on NVMe, so none of these things are an issue. Now, I do run Windows 11, maybe that's a factor, but it was bad to the point where I basically couldn't finish a match. We would reach a point in the game where the lag was ridiculous, and as a result of it, I was basically playing a semi-slideshow experience, and there seems to be a direct correlation between the frames you have and the reaction time and accuracy of your units. So I basically having 20 frames, it meant that my guys would be standing there as 50 zombies run towards them and we had five trucks with HMGs, 15 dudes all set up, look in the right direction and there's the zombies coming towards them, they'd stare and then the zombie would hit them and then they'd react. And so it meant that I couldn't push out to actually kill anything or secure ground. And it also meant that I could never finish the game. This was really unfortunate. You kind of have to take the rest of what I'm going to say with a kind of grain of salt, because theoretically speaking, I don't know what actually happens when you kill patient zero. And I understand that it can be hard to divert development time to working on performance while simultaneously improving the game in, in the feature department and, and fleshing out what the actual game itself. But it's very difficult for me to recommend the game or even really praise it when fundamentally I couldn't play it. I had much more success in the Horde game mode and I enjoyed that. However, as with any Horde mode in any game, it gets a little bit stale after a while. It was a shame that I wasn't able to experience the main game mode to its full extent. This could be an experience that I had my own and it is worth keeping in mind. It's an early access. These things happen. Performance is never the most important aspect in an early access. I have a bad feeling about this. The sound design is great. It's not like, wow, amazing. Okay, great, cool, let's move on. UI, it's okay. However, I know they're working on it and there'll be an update soon, they'll be improving it. And speaking of that, let's move on to the roadmap. I'm actually quite impressed with how detailed, nicely laid out and clear and concise the roadmap is. So, onboarding, onboarding, onboarding. It's very important in games, and it's one of the hardest things to get correct, is how do you introduce the player to the game? From what I experienced, there are two tutorial systems. There is voice tutorial pop-up box that appears in the top right, and then there is graphic tutorial thing that you can get to in the settings. They both suck. A lot of time just trying to understand minute features and mechanics, tiny things you can do, what is what, how do I make money, and what's effective against what, etc. There are ways to structure these tutorials that are intuitive, refined, and alongside that, the progression is quite unclear. I didn't really understand, should I rush a civilian building and start evacuating, or should I rush a barracks and start recruiting loads of people? What is fundamentally important, and how, how, how does that progression path look. Maybe in the future there's going to be a tech tree. Additionally, it would be nice if there was a better way of representing the stage the infection is at, because a lot of the time I felt like, oh, I'm fine, everything's okay, and then all of a sudden 500 zombies, two big boys coming at my two chain link fences with a single guard. What I can say is that what is there is incredibly interesting. I think the premise is awesome and the way they're trying to execute it is awesome. I like it a lot. I can also tell you the concept of the game is amazing, but the way the game is presented to you, both in the UI, the tutorials, and the way things happen in game is very poor. It feels like a chore, and I think that's missing, but the developers seem to have a very clear, well-structured and concise roadmap that is adding very interesting mechanics and systems. And I think that it's very clear that down the line, this game will improve massively. So, can I recommend this game for the moment? On the basis of what the game is, no. I can't. I wouldn't. So what I can say is that if you're interested in the game, I think you should put it on your wish list, join the Discord, keep an eye on it. I'll put a few links down below in the description, but I don't think it's ready yet to be jumped into. I will definitely be keeping an eye on it. Should these things improve and I play the game in the near future, I will update my opinions, I will update this video. Nonetheless, I've been your host Wizard and this is another review. So yeah, if you like what I do guys, I'm going to do a shameless little self plug now so you can leave if you want. If you like what I do, you can do a membership now. There aren't that many benefits, it's mainly just to show your support. There's 
super thanks as all this fancy stuff. Watch the ads, the ads help. Don't watch the fucking ads, get an ad blocker. And uh, yeah, we're live on Twitch five days of the week. Come on over, say hi, vibe. A lot of the time we're testing out new games and we get my opinions on these games live, unfiltered, unedited. And uh, yeah, I've been your host, Wizards. I hope you have a lovely day and uh, I'll see you in the next one.